Hey everyone, this is Keish Liker from Gaming Trend and Tabletop Throwdown, and I'm here with James from Cheap Ass Games. And we are here to talk about a couple of their uh, new titles that have been just released, and one that has actually just had a very successful Kickstarter, and that is TAC right now. And we have a prototype version to kind of get a feel for how the game plays. So ex explain a little bit of uh, where the game come from, comes from and, and how it works. The game is described in Patrick Rothfuss's book, The Wise Man's Fear, which is the second of his King Killer trilogy. And it's not described in detail, it is described as a beautiful game, but not like any of the rules. Because at the time he wrote the book, there was no game. And a few years ago, we got together and started working on the actual rules for the game. And that's what we've got here. We just finished the Kickstarter for it, and it, uh, it's coming out in November uh, of this year. It'll probably be in retail stores by December. It's, it's cutting it a little too close for Christmas, actually, but uh, we're doing the best we can with it. It's a two-player abstract strategy game like chess or go uh, and let me get the pieces out of the way but this is a hybrid board meaning it can be different sizes you can play this game on any size board from three by three which is a really simple game all the way up to eight by eight which is ridiculous um, mostly it's played on five by five and six by six this is a four by four of squares or a five by five of diamonds and that's just one of the sort of inventions we've, we've come up with with this game is a way to make multiple sizes of board in the same space. You can also just play it on a regular, you know, checkerboard style board or anything like that. The goal of the game is to complete a road that connects opposite edges. So it doesn't have to be like this, it could be like this. Um, it doesn't have to be a straight line, but they do have to be connected edge to edge. They don't connect diagonally, so that's not a winning road, mm -hmm, okay. but that would be. And there's going to be stacks of pieces on the board eventually. So I want to have the stone on top of all those stacks, and that's that's a win for black also. On your turn, you can place a new piece in an empty space, or you can move a stack of pieces that you control. So if you have the top piece, you can move that stack. And moving means picking some up and then dropping them off one or more at a time as you move along in a straight line. So a stack this tall, let's get to the middle now so it can't really go very far. Let's say it was here, right? Black could pick it up and do that with it, move it all the way to there, or maybe just leave the white piece covered and go as far as here. Um, the movement of the stack and the versatility in that movement is kind of what makes the game work. You can play a piece standing up like that. That's called a standing stone, or people call it a wall. It moves normally, but it can't have another piece stacked on top of it. And it also does not count as part of a road. So right now, that's not actually a winning road for black. Hmm. The power of the wall is it can't be covered, so it's harder for white to take that stack back over if I put a wall on top of it. And if black puts a wall on top of it. And then can the wall be moved? With the, the wall stack? moves wall moves just like everything else. So all the stones move the same way. So the wall can move the stack and maybe do something like that. And that gets me gets black closer to a win. He just needs to put a piece there. Mm -hmm. And we both have a capstone. The capstone is the power piece. It does count as part of a road, which the wall does not. It cannot have a piece played on top of it. And by itself, it can flatten a standing stone. That's the only way they go flat. Okay. So let's have a look at this. Let's say that white had a wall here. Um, black can take this and move those pieces to there, but he can't just crush this wall with the whole stack. He's got to do it with the capstone alone. That's right. Very cool. And that's, that's the basics of the game. Uh, at the start, you play your opponent's piece, put it wherever you want. Um, at the end, if there's no road when somebody runs out of pieces, then we count our flat stones. So if you play a lot of walls, you can prevent me from making a road, but you're gonna lose that flat count. And so you're not really doing yourself a lot of favor by just walling off the board. Uh, and there's a few other very simple rules um, that are not even worth mentioning, but that's the basis of it.
Cool, and um, so you're aiming for December for a retail release of this. So I am. We've told our backers that it's going to ship in November. Um, we know it's going to take a long time to produce. There's a lot of variables that go into building this thing. And we got the horses running as soon as the campaign closed. Uh, but, you know, we sort of lined all that up and said, okay, I think we can ship the backer rewards in November. That means they go out to distribution in November. That means mm -hmm. they probably hit retail in December. I would love to ship this early. I really would. But um, experience tells me that it probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> and the production version will look slightly different from this. What you're looking at here, these are the pieces from the tavern set. And this is still a homemade set, but it's very close to the tavern mm, okay. set that we had in the Kickstarter. And that is the small, you know, portable set. The pieces in the retail game are, it is a bigger set. It is a six by six board. It's very different artwork from this. Uh, the pieces are slightly larger. They have an interesting shape to them. They're not squares. The capstones are a little taller and so forth. Um, so yeah, this is one of the production sets, but not like the retail set. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, do you know how much it'll retail for? Yeah, uh, the, the game's going to be $55. And it runs like a half hour or so? Uh, Playtime depends on how big of a board you use and mm. what kind of a strategy game player you right. are. Uh, we really enjoy playing speed tech, where we just you're not allowed to think about your move, right? You make a lot of really dumb mistakes, but you get a lot of games. <laughs> but um, yeah, 20 minutes is about how long a five by five game will take. Okay. Yeah. A little bit more with a six by six. A little so bit more with six by six. It's not twice as long, but it's it's definitely there's more game there. Mm -hmm. um, and you can play a four by four game in like five to ten minutes, and that's really a good learning game. Mm -hmm. In the four by four game, you have fewer pieces. And you don't have capstones, so now the walls are the boss oh. piece. Uh, and you learn how to use walls aggressively in a 4x4 mm -hmm. game. And you can take what you learn in that and kind of move it up to your 5x5 five five game and get better it, with it. It really sounds like not having the capstone really changes the, the dynamic of the game. It's, it certainly does. Um, and even 3x3 three three is actually kind of interesting. You mm -hmm. should try it. Uh, we never recommend that 3x3 three three is a starter game. 4x4 mm -hmm. is a starter game. But if you know the game really well, you can enjoy the 3x3 three three game. And now we're going to talk about pairs, which is a unique deck system that... Um, I, you won't hear me say that. Oh, well, <laughs> well it's not unique. It's, it's, not, it's not unique. It's a, it's a simple triangle deck. So if you know the Great Del Moody or 12 Days, um, there are games that use it. But the structure of the deck is there's one one, two twos, three threes, and in this case, there's 10 tens. That's the top of the deck. So it's 55 cards, just with numbers, mm -hmm. no suits. And it's a nicely versatile deck, it mm -hmm. turns out. It's unique in the fact that it isn't your typical 52 card yes, deck. Yes, it is different that, from a poker deck. That, that's, that's what I was trying to get at. So, But um, we're going to talk about pairs a little bit and then also um, about a new game that's going to be using a pairs deck. And it's called, and I got Deadfall. the name, Deadfall. Deadfall, yeah. okay. A Deadfall is actually a kind of trap. Um, I, I learned about it in the movie The Edge, where, where there's, it's, it's a pit trap, a bear falls into a pit trap. Mm. It uses the animal's weight against it. It turns out that's not really what you call a deadfall, that, that's a pit trap. A uh, deadfall is actually like a box with a stick, you know, where the mm. squirrel goes into the box, knocks the stick, and the... And the it, either way, it's a gravity-driven trap. And deadfall is like a bluffing game where you try to trap somebody in your, you know, to, into, into calling yeah. you when, when, when they're wrong. But uh, first I'll tell you about basic pairs. And again, it's that triangle deck, so there's one, one, mm -hmm. two, twos, up to ten tens. Pairs is a pub game, and this is the Goddesses of Cuisine uh, Pairs deck by Echo Chernick. Gorgeous art. This is, I think, deck number like 14 in the series of, of different art decks. They all have the same content, but they have different games inside. Okay. Um, the core game, which is in here, is the pub game where there is only one loser. And you're just trying not to get a pair. So you can oh, see okay. how the structure of the deck means it's really easy to get a pair of 10s, it's impossible mm -hmm. to get a pair of 1s. And I'm going to start by giving everybody one card. I actually should start by burning five cards just because we can deal all the way to the bottom and this makes it impossible to count. But right. the start of the game is the low card goes first, so the 4 is going to go first. And that player's options are to take a card or to fold. If you take a card, you're just trying not to get two of a kind. You try not to get a pair. So like a pair of 9s, is a loss of this round for that player. They're going to keep one of those nines for points, and hmm. with four players, the first person to accumulate 16 points is the loser. We don't care about the winner, we care about the loser. The loser has to do a penalty, he's got to take a drink or pay for the drinks or tell a joke or do a lap around the house or whatever the penalty is, right? Um, 
but that is it, and the winners all win. So it's so that's awesome. Uh, let's start another round. Oops, here, here, 10, 6, 7, and 10. The 6 goes first and takes a hit. 7 gets a 3, 10 gets a 10. I'm trying to teach you the rules, so I'm not <laughs> going to kill myself. But if I did not want to hit that 10, and with one card I'm always going to hit, mm -hmm. but if I didn't want to do that, my other option is folding, which is I can take the lowest card in play. So instead of risking getting those 10 points, I could have said, I will take these three points for sure. Oh, okay. Okay, so... So there's still a penalty to it. There's a penalty for folding, absolutely, but you know how big it is, and it's lower probably than what you would get if you took that hit. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll, now that I've explained that, I'll, 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 I'll take my, I'll take my ten and, <laughs> and end the round. Here's the ace: one, ten, eight, ten. Obviously, the ace takes a hit and gets a two. This ten could fold for one. He's already got nine points, so he can do that. He'll fold for one, and that also ends the round. Oh, okay. Five, four, seven, seven. The four gets a three. The seven gets another seven. That's some points for that player. Six, ten, seven, seven. We don't have it, but if there's ever a tie for low card, we just deal extra cards to break that tie. Okay. okay? Uh, the six is first, takes a hit, and gets a six, so that's the end of that round. And that continues until somebody accumulates 16 points. Hmm. Very fast, very easy. Very fast, very easy to deal, very easy to teach. You can watch a game of this and, and jump right in. And that's part of like the definition of a pub game. You can jump in, you can play quick, you can learn the rules fast, and uh, you know you can play for money if you want to. <laughs> there's lots of different pairs variants. Some of them are similar to this, some of them are very different. You know, like all the variety of games you can play with a poker deck, you can play that many games with this. But the game I want to teach you about is Deadfall which is the it is a game of its own it is the first pairs deck game that doesn't have the core rules to pairs because we kind of assume by this point somebody people, people have that mm -hmm. you can download all these rules mm -hmm. for free right but the rules in deadfall are fully for that game and all the variants of that game it is a bluffing game and so it's a little bit like liar's dice everybody starts with a hand of cards and as you play the game, you're playing cards out of your hand and you're saying, the card that I'm playing is not dead. And that means that somebody still has a copy of that card. So I'm gonna actually just blind play this, but everyone plays one card to start. And the low card goes first. So I played my two and I can either call one of these players, meaning I think I think tens are dead, which I don't. <laughs> I think eights are dead, which I don't. Or I can play a card of my own. If I play a six, I'm saying someone still has a six. Maybe I still have a six in my hand. Maybe I think someone else still has a six. I'm deducing as we go what people might have left. Um, but that happens for a while. Maybe he plays another six. Okay. <laughs> Playing this at random is a little weird. Yeah. But, but normally you can sort of guess what people are thinking by the cards that they play. Um, I play a third six. And this guy's like, okay, so half the deck has been dealt out. Right. right? You're playing that six as, as a challenge that says... You know, half I, of them I, are... I think there's still at least one out there right. somewhere. Maybe I'm looking at it. Maybe it's still in my hand. Maybe, you know, maybe this guy can't call me because he's got a six in his hand, right? I'm actually going to peek and see if he's got a six. He says, no, I'd call your six. So at this point, that's the end of the round. He said that is the last six, and now everyone's going to show. And if he's right, I was wrong to play this, so I lose. Okay. And the penalty system is this. We all anti one coin to begin. And the penalty for playing a six or, or getting called on a six is going to be six. So if I was right, he would pay me six and I would take the pot. If I was wrong, I pay him six and he takes the pot, and that's the end of the round. Um, the bluff comes as you get deeper and deeper into the cards, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, well, that can't possibly, there can't possibly be any more of that card left. Or, or right. I've been watching what you've been playing so far. There's something fishy about why you, why did you play a four mm -hmm. as your second to last card? I'm pretty sure you were dealt a pair of fours, so I'm not going to call you. Like all of that comes into right. play once there's agency in, in the way these cards play out. So that's Deadfall.
cool. And um, that's going to, that's available now. It's available now. Yeah, that's coming to retail so, stores right now. Yeah, and the we'll, artwork, th it's not this art, obviously. It is, um, it's fantasy art from a guy named Bill McGuire, who's a computer artist. Really amazing stuff. So it's got a dragon on the one, and, and goblins, and oh, okay. uh, heroes, and, and sprites, and, and beetles. And it's really, really nice art. But the nice thing about all of these pairs variants is you can play them with all the pairs decks. Mm -hmm. right? They're, these decks are not specific. So if you love the Goddesses of Cuisine deck, play Deadfall with it. That's the point. Right? Right. You get the art that you like and you play the game that you like. And they happen to have different rules in every box, but mix and match however you want. Like if you have 12 days and you're playing around Christmas, you can use that if, deck. Exactly. Um, if you have 12 days, you'll have to strip out the 11s and 12s, but you're still right. yeah, you're good to go for pairs. Mm -hmm. And then the final game you wanted to talk about was Kill Dr. Lucky, which I forget what the anniversary was. 19 and a half. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the 19 and a half anniversary is actually the wadded up pieces of paper anniversary. Uh, no, uh, Kill Dr. Lucky is, was our very first board game. Cheap Ass Games brought out Kill Dr. Lucky in late 1996. And it's been our bestseller for a long time. Paizo Publishing had it for a while while we were sort of dormant, and we got the rights back. The new edition of Kill Dr. Lucky is a complete upgrade. It's an overhaul of the rules as well as the art. It has an alternate new board on the back of the main board. It has uh, character cards to tell you who you are, but they sort of help you anchor your, your points as your, as your character gets stronger. Uh, it has a new mix of cards because it has a whole new sort of way the core mechanic works. It's very familiar if you've played the game before, but it's very different in the details. It's, a, it's the rules update that I've been wanting to do for a long time, coupled with a really nice change to the artwork. So Kill Dr. Lucky is looking super good right now. And that had a successful Kickstarter campaign. It did. We kicked it. We kicked it uh, last fall. We raised. I'm forgetting. I think we raised like two hundred and twenty thousand mm -hmm. on that, something like that. I really don't know, but it's in that neighborhood. Right. Um, and that let us do a couple of other games at the same time, which we we oh. sort of tend to you know shim a couple of easy games into the, mm -hmm. the bigger Kickstarters. So we did Before I Kill You, Mr. Spy, which is a reprint of our second game ever. You can see where we're going with this. We might just reprint <laughs> all of them. Um, uh, and we did Deadfall, all sort of printed at the same time. And Kill Dr. Lucky got an upgrade to wooden pawns and uh, super good artwork throughout and nice finish on the cards and you know, everything you can do to make the game as good as possible. So I'm really excited to have that game back in print and, mm -hmm. uh, and see, I guess, a new generation of players pick it up. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I knew it was hard to get, but people seem to want to get a copy of it yet. So now the... I, I saw during the campaign or just before the campaign, I saw a copy of Paizo's edition of Kill Dr. Lucky on Amazon for like $300. Oh, wow. And I was like, you better hurry, man, because yeah. that ain't the right price. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I, hope, I hope he sold, I, guess, I don't hope anything about that, but, but, uh, but I'm impressed that it was in that kind of demand. Right, yeah. So good. And do you have an idea when that will be going out to backers? Oh, yeah. oh it's, backers already have it. I mean, okay. we, if if you filled out the survey when we asked you to, then it's then you have it. If not, or if there's been a mistake or whatever, you know, we're still trickling out a couple of copies. But that mm -hmm. has shipped to backers. It's in retail stores, or it is now, or very soon. So um, you should you will be able to pick that up over the summer. And it's cool. if you if your store doesn't have it. Ask them to get it. If they can't get it for you, it's easy to find. It's on Amazon. It's online. Cool.